meaningless. If you can't notice a difference in your gameplay from when you don't have a badge equipped to when you put it up to Hall of Fame, if you don't notice that difference, get rid of the badge. Hey, what's up, YouTube? You already know I'm All City with AllCityLiveTV.com, and thank you for tuning in. First and foremost, I want to say if you guys are looking for players to run with, you're out there running with random, stop it. Come on out and join our Discord. We have a great and amazing community of 2K players pulling up on 4,000 players in our Discord. We would love to have you guys join. Stop running with randoms. Come on out and join us if you're looking for players to run with, or if you guys would like an opportunity to run with me out there during one of our live streams. I want to talk some more about about these badges because you guys know over the last few days I've been uh, making videos about like badges and which badges should make it over into NBA 2K22. 2K has a lot of badges that are somewhat useless and from iteration to iteration with each 2K some badges are OP and then they go to useless and then they come back to overpowered and we don't know what we're going to get because the foundation keeps changing on us. So let's talk about the playmaking badges as far as from 2K21 to 2K22. We're going to go into these badges right now. I have already done finishing and shooting badges. And you guys know how I feel about that. Some of these badges are like overkill and they don't really make sense. And there's just too many badges to go around. I think 2K needs to simplify things. We're going to get into playmaking now. And I think the playmaking category is fairly balanced. The only thing that I can say about playmaking is I like the Needle Threader badge and I like what it does. But this year, you know, last year Needle Threader was OP. And this year I don't even equip Needle Threader. But Bullet Pass is like the new needle threader badge so i have equipped bullet presser on almost every single player at a really high level the only thing that i could say maybe get rid of bailout but as far as that outside of getting rid of badges i think they could kind of combine ankle breaker uh space creator and tight handles into one badge they don't separate these badges you got people like don't know which badge to put on and they need to offer a little bit more transparency on how to activate these badges because they don't tell you you equip these badges but they don't tell you how to activate them and then sometimes i, I know you guys have witnessed this as well one time like you'll just do like a, a quick flick down on your right stick and you'll get an ankle breaker animation and then next time you got to perform like 10 dribble moves in one combo to get an ankle breaker animation so it really 2k is not really transparent in how they tell you how to incorporate these badges into your game and when they'll activate so that's what the only thing that i got to say about the uh playmaking category but what i do want to get into today is defense and rebounding because i love defense and rebounding i love how they set i love the ideas that they have let's get into these badges see what we got here clutch defender could probably get out the game nobody really uses clutch defender and i think they should it says steps up defensively in big moments and i think they tried to counter clutch shooter but it doesn't really work well with clutch defender you guys let me know if you're equipping clutch defender outside of that i think they could get rid of worm if it's never operated properly i know some of you guys out there for every badge that i say hey knock that badge get rid of it because it doesn't operate they, they wanted to implement the badge but they just didn't make the mechanics work properly for the badge like the worm animation is extremely long while you're going into a worm animation somebody else could come up under and grab the rebound it could be a guard coming up under while you're out there you know worming a big man a guard to come up under and grab the boards because the worm animation takes so long i love heart crusher but what i want to talk about in the in the, like the defensive category is how many badges like offensive badges need to go up against the defensive category so we talk about ankle braces until you run up against like some type of playmaker with hall of fame ankle breakers uh you know um hall of fame space creator hall of fame tight handles then you'll notice that your ankles will get ripped apart off ball pass is one of those badges that help with those ankle breaker animations as well which you guys may not know about but off ball pass an absolutely amazing badge to have equipped for your defensive badge arsenal you may want to consider equipping that but we're talking about like which how many offensive badges from playmaking finishing and also shooting badges the defensive category needs to go up against and i think that's what they need to focus on for nba 2k22 we need to bring defense back into the game 
And the, the way you bring defense back into the game, if you're going to flood the offense with a ton of badges, then you need to flood the defense with just as many badges. So for every offensive badge, there needs to be a defensive counterpart. And I know that 2K tried to do it, but they just didn't implement it well. So ankle braces, this one badge, ankle braces, is the badge that they use to counter space creator ankle breaker and tight handles and that doesn't make any sense you know they need to if they're gonna have like a three badge category for playmaking and dribbling then they need to have a three badge category for defense to counter that so that way as a defender it could become more about strategy and if you got the right badges equipped then you'll be able to lock down they also got the clamps animation badge but you know clamps is this is where things go wrong because some people would like to say well clamps helps you with space creator tight handles and ankle breaker it, it will indeed help you but if you guys played nba 2k 21 for the next gen you understand how poor the defense is so clamps you know although i got you guys see i got this at a high level it doesn't necessarily activate at the right times especially when they get an animation out there that just boosts them past your defender and you feel like you're stuck in the mud there if they did properly implement these badges then they would be able to counter the offensive badge side but they don't properly implement these badges and we get stuck in animations that make us look like poor defenders so we got the box badge and this box badge is supposed to counter rebound chaser it's supposed to counter your opponent having the worm badge on and i don't even equip it i don't equip the box badge because again just a badge that's not implemented properly into the game and they cannot slack on this badges are part of 2k's foundation they need to make sure that these badges have a lot of depth to them. Otherwise, get rid of them. If they're not going to have a lot of depth, if they're going to be meaningless, if you can't notice a difference in your gameplay from when you don't have a badge equipped to when you put it up to Hall of Fame, if you don't notice that difference, get rid of the badge. There's no need for it to be in the game. You got players out there just wasting badge points on some of these badges, and they're useless out there. Chase Down Artist is another good example of this. Once upon a time, Chase Down Artist was one of the most goaded defensive badges in the game. In 2K21 for the next gen, you barely need to put it on. Put it on bronze just to unlock those animations and you're good to go. I noticed this by going back into NBA 2K20. I did it all on live stream. If you guys would like to join our live stream, come on out. We would love to have you guys come on out to our live stream. I was playing NBA 2K20 and I noticed that the chase down, like the, the animation for chase down blocks was there. Getting these swap blocks with my two-way slashing playmaker that I I can't even get with my 6'8 playmaking three level scorer. It's really sad to see these animations just disappear. And that just means to me that 2K is slacking on their Mac and they need to get back into the lab, get into these badges, make sure they function properly. If they're not there, get rid of them. Chase Down Artist used to be a go to badge. Now, not so much. You just need to put it on bronze to unlock the animation. Clamp's always a good badge to have in previous versions of 2K. This year, you need to have it on because it's just the defense is so terribly poor. You need to have any type of help that you can out there. So clamps is a viable option to put on. But I would prefer that they get rid of it and allow those like uh, body up animations to come from your attributes. Attributes need to mean something in the game. I've seen people out there with absolutely like no perimeter defense and playing decent out there. And you would think that you know they would suffer tremendously although i do notice because i put my stretch playmaker out there and he has a lower perimeter defense and i notice a difference between that and my offensive oriented four but it's not a huge difference that help defense can't take over and there needs to be more of a penalty for lower attributes and badges cannot serve as a crutch for those lower attributes that's what 2k needs to make sure works properly defensive leader another badge that people barely equip this year a badge that used to be goaded when you're going into pro-am or rec because it's going to boost your teammates attributes for defense but the defense is so poor in nba 2k 21 that they just don't work properly and it's just not worth wasting those badge points on badges like defensive leader heart crusher badge that i absolutely love i love seeing your like my opponent go cold out there and they drop about six or seven attributes when they go cold and heart crusher makes that happen 
And for shooters out there, you have the anti-freeze badge. But again, a badge that's not properly implemented because Heart Crusher, the shooting category has a counter for Heart Crusher with the anti-freeze badge. But then again, the finishing category and the playmaking category does not necessarily have a counter for the Heart Crusher badge. Hot Stopper, again, boosting TakeOver. I'm not a big fan of TakeOver should come from your gameplay solely. And they need to kind of re revisit what is considered good gameplay because a lot of players you know they we if we run a five out you got players sitting in the corner sitting at the hash you know not every player is going to be involved in every single play and there needs to be something said for players that are actually playing their position and you know creating space for a good iso ball handler that should be a, a positive for your team overall and that type of gameplay should be mean something you know you guys know that when you're in like a career Career game they give you like a boost for proper spacing things like this that's what needs to happen in your regular gameplay intercept the badge another badge that was once upon a time super goaded and now not so much a badge that's supposed to counter like you know good passing ability and it just does you just don't get the animations are inconsistent i should say that one day you could be like uh awesome defender and then the next day you can't even get your hands into the passing lane it's just highly discouraging because 2k is so inconsistent intimidate a badge another badge which they need to kind of define again we need more transparency they need to better define what are these badges doing and how to properly operate these badges when we're out there on the court they give a brief description but you just never know sometimes you could be in the vicinity sometimes you're in the vicinity you're heavily contesting a player and and, you know, their badges outweigh your one intimidator badge. Let's say, let's go into the shooting category to kind of see what counters the intimidator badge. I'm going to go into shooting and finishing because intimidator is supposed to work at the perimeter and also in the like interior when uh, when players are driving into the paint. So you got blinders, you got catch and shoot, you got uh, the badges like corner specialist, green machine, damn it, almost every single badge, hot zone hunter. You got uh, stop and pop that's supposed to boost, rhythm shooter, volume shooter, etc. I mean, like how many badges do you want to counter the one defensive badge to go against all of these offensive badges? Just don't make sense if you create an offensive badge and this is why i think they kind of they need to kind of consolidate these badges because it what happens is it, you know the defense is always going to be at a disadvantage the shooting category has so many badges to boost their shooting ability but then the defensive category has one badge to counter all of these offensive boosts that the offensive player gets that really don't make sense so they if they're going to create an offensive badge there needs to be a direct and noticeable counter to that offensive badge and that's what i think 2k needs to revisit these badges and just go back to the drawing board man if you got to minimize it consolidate limit some of these badges out there do that man it's going to make everybody a much better player and they're going to feel less confused off ball pest again a great badge to have pick dodger used to be goaded when people were using screens out there and now we come across a game that the foundation changed so much we don't even need to equip the pick dodger badge because the gameplay is so different this is just from one year to the next one year we're using screens and then the very next year we don't even need screens the 2k community is always going to make the adjustment to dominate on offense and screens are just not there this year you don't need the pick dodger badge because we're playing help defense pickpocket I love the idea of the pickpocket badge. I think they need to revisit this badge because what ends up happening is you don't necessarily need pickpocket, but you could just play whatever offensive animation the player is queuing up and get a bump steal animation. And 2K needs to fix these bump steals. If you got the pickpocket badge on Hall of Fame, especially if you played the animation that the offensive queued up, you should be able to get a steal out there and it should be noticeable. The difference between you and a player that does not have the badge should be highly noticeable there should be a noticeable difference between the two players and that's what we're not seeing out there a player without pickpocket could get just as many steals as a player with pickpocket and there's something wrong with that pogo stick again a badge that i touted a badge that i thought was absolutely amazing is no longer necessary for this year's iteration of 2k 
Will they reincorporate these badges back into the game? That remains to be seen. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Rebound Chaser, always a good badge to have equipped. This player right here is a perimeter defender, so this is why I don't have the Rebound Chaser equipped right now. But if I was trying to get boards out there, I would definitely equip the Rebound Chaser badge. Rim Protector, if you got a perimeter defender, you only need to equip this badge on bronze to get some better animations. But if you're in the interior, you might want to go up a badge that i would like to see uh back in nba 2k22 with better defense mechanics they need to go back into the defense revisit it make sure it functions properly get these players into mocap they were slacking on mocap and they really only checked the offensive side of these motion captures and they need to go back into it, separate the defensive like motion capture and create these animations so we can play proper defense out there. Tyler's Defender, a badge that way back when used to be a good badge to equip now it's no longer needed you just need to put gatorade on your player and you can save yourself badge points by not equipping tireless defender trapper badge the concept is great the idea is dope do they properly implement a badge like trapper no they do not get rid of trapper we shouldn't see this badge in nba 2k22 let me know what you guys think in the comment section below also about the worm badge another badge that just takes too long the animation is too long winded if they reincorporated this badge it's the nba 2k22 they need to make the animation a lot more smoother and a lot more fluid so that the defense doesn't get penalized by having a good badge on that's supposed to make you play somewhat like Dennis Rodman, the worm. Well, known for getting boards out there. He's not known for struggling in an animation and not getting boards out there. He's not known for struggling, pushing a defender out the way and sacrificing a board for that matter. So again, let me know in the comment section what you think about which badges should be reincorporated into NBA 2K22. They need to function properly. Which badges you think should be brought back? Which badges should be taken out? And if they're brought back, which badges should be relooked at, remapped, and reworked for NBA 2K22 to help us play better defense out there? I hope you guys found this video helpful and or informative. And if you did, please consider dropping a like on the video. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing as we intend to have a ton of next gen content coming your way. Catch you guys on the next video. Easy, y'all.